First of all, I think the number one mistake guys make, this is what I've ascertained in my experience. Okay. First, you, they dive in way too fast. Yes. Can't desensitize the clitoris. And right. you will, it's, it's, it's- If you a, go too hard, too fast. Too hard, too fast, or too much of the same thing. Like, it's it's a lot of like, a lot of teas. Yo, yeah. what's up, Primp Brigade? On this episode, we have my boy Mitch Patel here, and we discuss how to eat pussy. The whole show's about how to eat pussy. Uh, so listen in. This is going to be a dope one. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Patreon and uh, consultations at DanteNero.com. Click on console. Oh, boy. Uh, that's for those of you who don't know why Dante is doing that voice. <laughs> Uh, you might want to tune into the Patreon this week. If for the Patreon listeners, uh, we break down the divorce of Sofia Vargara and Joe Manganiello. Um, and then Sofia joins the show. It's 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 uncanny. Uh, no, no, you're going to love it. You're going to uh, love it. And then a new character also joins the show. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's uh, Selma Hayek also joins the show. <laughs> uh, I think we talk about the divorce for about two minutes and then it gets into insanity. So... <laughs> If you haven't signed up for the Patreon and you really enjoy goofing, uh, just us goofing <laughs> off, this week is that one. This week is the episode to check that out. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Also, that's where we're uh, putting all the archived episodes uh, of Manschool202 uh, back when we started out as the Beige Phillips Show back in the day. All those will be on Patreon.com slash Manschool202. And if you want any relationship advice from me, uh, you can uh, email me for a consultation. Advice from Harry at gmail.com. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. We got a special guest today. Um, I'm really dope, but first and foremost, Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Oh, Dante, you know I am. I'm having a great time trying to lead my best life one day, one moment at a time. And I'm doing an amazing job at it. And then still, I'm having a tough time keeping these alligators down. I get you. I get you. We got a special guest. Um, and uh, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. Mm. This dude is a special dude. I really love this dude a lot. Um, I don't see him nearly as much as I should. Uh, very funny dude. Um, give it up for my boy Mitch Fatel, yo. Give it up for Mitch. What up? Louder. Everybody. What up? What up, Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> Dante, how, you... long, how long have we known each other now? 20. At least 20. At we least 20. Each other enough. See, that's the problem when you get married and move out of New York City is you, you lose all your good friends that you used to like hanging out with and yeah 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 i mean honestly we never hung out as much as we should have but you're one of i always guys, feel that you're one of the guys that i'm like you know because you look back on life and you go everybody says this it's like if you read the if you saw the new arnold schwarzenegger uh biography no no but i will check it out on netflix which is really good he says it like you before you know it you're like man what the fuck happened in my life it just goes by so fast yeah, and then yeah. you look back and you're like why didn't i why didn't i nurture those friendships more why didn't yeah. i realize that those were the important things why did i why was i so focused on other things instead yeah. of going, like, oh man my friendship so so i wish we yeah. would i wish we could go back and be a little bit closer yeah but, but that's the wisdom like... yeah that's the wisdom yeah. of, of of age and you know in hindsight because you yeah. you figure out those things through all that stuff that you've done that's how you learn you know yeah. so that you you those lessons because it's hard when you're going through it to to especially when you're in stand-up and you're trying to achieve things in show business you have to do it at a hundred miles an hour and then yeah, but, you don't know at some point you don't have to do that anymore, but you don't know when that is because there's nobody there to tell you. There's no way to figure that out. One hundred percent. You know, yeah. I was talking to a, I do a occasional, not anymore because he's too busy, but I did a podcast with a UFC fighter. You guys ever uh, hear I, Corey Sanhagen? Yeah. I know, yeah. I know who he is. And he's a, uh, he's a kid. I mean, he's in his twenties. Yeah. Uh, and I told him, the biggest regret I have looking back is I started out with some of the coolest cats on the planet. Yeah. 
didn't appreciate their comedy because I was too busy being in competition with them. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Started yeah. out with Dave Attell, Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle. Yeah. You know, I, and I, you know, Jeff Ross, and we were just all in so much competition that we never just enjoyed each other as much as I think we should have. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely makes sense. And you, you, I mean, now when you look at it and you, and you look at these people, you're like, my God, you know, I mean, it, it, a lot of it is because we, you know, you're so insecure about where you're at and what, what your, where your status is as opposed to just enjoying the art form. I mean, because all of us do something that's so different because it it, it comes from, you know, this kind of truthful kind of expression of the art form. And, um, and we don't, you know, it's, we're really not in competition. Well, it, yeah. And what you just said was so apropos, which is, I just wanted to get back to that because that was a little, brilliant which is you know i think we're all shocked at that point that it's kind of working and like oh my god we're kind of working in the business and we may get mm. what we dreamed of so you get so like caught up in like not losing it you don't feel confident enough where we should feel so you're you're just you're so scared of losing the little bit you're getting that you don't yeah. want to getting things well yeah. you get it and then you need to hold on to it and there's a fear that yeah. you have to hold on to it so now you you can't stop don't stop yeah. i just got it yeah. you know and that's not just show business. That's all of life. Whatever, whatever thing you're pushing for, you know, and it's, it's a tough balance. I look back on some of the things like, oh, sh I should have just enjoyed this a little bit more. I wish I had, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with my family, but you know, there's that balance of like, it's not permanent in that moment. So you're and scared. What's the, and fear. what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What, yeah. what, what what's the next do? thing? Yeah. Or, or the fear of what happens if I lose this thing? I can't stop because I'll lose this thing. So it's it's fear. It's what what happens when you're younger. It's just fear. Yeah. Well. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad we got where we are, where we love each other now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I never ever didn't love you, but now I can appreciate you more as a talent. Does yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I think there was times even later on, maybe 15 years back, when we would run into each other. Maybe we would be like, "Oh man, what's yeah. up?" And it was such, such a good good feeling to see you and always a uh you know a level of admiration i mean because i you know like i started doing comedy how long you've been doing it mitch so i'm in my 50s now and i started when i was 15 years old wow i started when i was 15 and i was doing gigs at like 18 wow was, yeah one of the true young comics and yeah to go on stage when i was 15 years old and i would say uh I would I'd be introduced as a real young comedian. Uh -huh. I'd come on stage and the audience would laugh because I was really young. I was right, right. And I wish I could say that the story had this great ending of like I was just so funny and stuff, but man, I sucked. Like, I, was <laughs> bad. I was bad. And that's why I tell everybody, like, you won't know how like people come to me all the time. And I'm like, you won't know if you're funny or not until you're in it. 10 years 10 like, years I started started to, yeah yeah, yeah. No, 10 no. years is when you're good enough to know how much you suck how much you suck <laughs> and also what your strengths are and what your weaknesses yeah. are and and you've gotten through so much crap at that point and you've yeah. had shit thrown at you and yeah you've the good times and so it takes 10 years to kind of get that so I look back when I was 15 my I used to do a joke now it's not a bad joke I remember my first joke is I said mm. uh I said, um, all my friends like to smoke pot. I was 15. I go, all my friends like to smoke pot. Uh, but all I do when I smoke pot is get horny and hungry. So the last time I got high, I fucked Betty Crocker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just brilliant. It was a, it's not a bad joke, though. Not about. I mean, you could you could take the the elements of that and re, you know, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, I mean, even if you go, even if you said I I I had I fell asleep and had a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. I think Amy Schumer actually used that in her last special. So, <laughs> <laughs> Harry, do you remember your first joke? The first it was uh, I don't remember the exact first joke, but I remember I had something in that first set that I ever did. Cool. About uh, 
all I wanted at, at, at home was just a peaceful place to masturbate. I didn't have a lot of <laughs> expectations on life. I don't remember the wording of it, but I remember that. I have it on tape. I audio yeah. tape mine. I got to go really? back and listen to it. It was yeah. actually not that bad for a first time, but I, I wrote from the time I was 14. I spent four years writing. I never stepped on stage. Mm. So I had pieced together a decent act. So it wasn't terrible. It was actually, in hindsight, it was a really fun set the first time. And then, of course, after that, it was just bombing for like... Yeah, for com just, comedy is always when you figure you, when you think you got it figured out, yeah. it kicks you in the dick. Yeah. <laughs> just, just when you think have the, you have the answers, I change all the questions. Well, well the thing deal. is, the first time, the reason why we get so horrified when we see ourselves from years ago is because we thought we were so good and mm -hmm. then you, but what we didn't realize is you were just amazed at that time that you were getting any laughs. Uh huh. Yeah. Just the fact you were getting laughs made you yeah, feel yeah. like a pro. And then you look back, you're like, well, I know what, I know how to get laughs now. That's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. What am I saying? Remember when you first started getting laughs? You were like, yeah. Shit. Uh, you know, I remember my first wave of laughter coming back to me. Mm hmm. And I remember it washing over me, <laughs> thinking I was like, that's it, I'm the shit. And thinking right. that it was going to be easy from that day forward. Yeah, yeah. Like, I got boy. it. You're like, I got it. Oh, good. Boy, I got it Boy, now. were you wrong. I, rem yeah. I Now, me, I started much later. Like, I, um, it's a weird thing. So, I was a kid. I always loved stand-up. Even when I was a little kid, like, eight years old. So, I used to, when I was I had to go to bed, I would sneak out of bed. And sneak and go by my, my mom and dad's room and watch um, Johnny Carson and watch the the stand ups that came on Johnny Carson. Right. Like I, like Dangerfield and stuff. And I like I mean, here's a, how, how crazy it was, Mitch. I remember names like remember Gary Mule Deer. Yeah, I remember that name. Like I remember like names like as a kid, I was eight years. Yo, I love Gary Mule Deer because you know he had the bug out eyes and shit like that. And uh the name. Yeah, uh that's really Emo Phillips and Jake Johansson and you know all those. But I didn't I wanted to do comedy, but I didn't start doing comedy until I was 34. Is when I first started. Oh, you were a late bloomer. Yeah, I started late. So I had a real I, I didn't have a lot of bombing in the beginning because it's kind of like, you know, how like when you go back to college, um, when you pay the credits, when people pay for the credits and they get a 4.0 because they yeah. go, OK, what's the syllabus? All right. I'm going to make sure this is done. That's done on time. Not like it was that kind of thing. So I read every book on stand up comedy and joke structure in this. And so it was really kind of I also didn't think that people would think I was funny because I was kind of was. You didn't that, think or you did? Think? No, I, I didn't think people I, like when you look at like a J.B. Smoove or somebody like that, you got, oh, this guy looks funny. He's funny. I just didn't think people. And I mean, I was a bit of a thug, too. So I did. I like my jokes have to be sharp because people don't really laugh at me. You know, stereotype that you got to get over what people are going to think. has yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah. My first joke was uh, I never had many friends, mostly just hostage. Just that was that was my first joke ever, but it was like structurally just da, 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 you know what I mean? It was lean yeah. and that's um, not a bad joke. That's not a bad joke at all, though. I mean, sometimes I throw it in every once in a while. I'll toss it in every once in a while, and it worked. But um, I actually, you know, I heard Amy Schumer did that bit. She did right. that. <laughs> <laughs> she called me though, so that's cool. <laughs> How's how you still married, Mitch? Still I, married? Yeah, I got so much to talk to you about because about marriage. Last time we spoke, this is a funny story. And I don't know if we could go back in our last podcast that we did. Yeah. I think you gave me too much credit. And I was like, you know something? I'm gonna tell Dante next time I talk to him that I have no idea what he was talking about because you said <laughs> something to me. You were explaining something. You're like, and you know when you do this? And I was like, yeah, when you do that, when you do that. And then I told my wife and she's like, what? And I was like, yeah, I got to ask him. You you were giving, you were telling, I'm going to just be really honest. You were you were going through how to go down on a girl. Uh -huh. You were telling me like, you know how like you have to hold them down <laughs> because they'll try to move away from you. And I was like, yeah, you got to hold them down. So <laughs> Yeah, but I was like, why the fuck did I ask him <laughs> what he was explaining? Because I'm not very good at that. And right, right. Like, 
I got to ask Dante on the next one to give me and the viewers <laughs> a pamphlet or some a little, sort. Of- uh, give you a little. Oh, I think what I was saying was that the. I think probably I was that you have to read the cues. You I said think- something. I remember exactly because I remember going, "Fuck, I don't do that." Shit, I got. <laughs> you said that like when you go down on a girl. See, this is the thing. My wife doesn't like that. She doesn't like people going down on her. My okay. wife, she just likes a penis inside of her. Right. Right. Okay. But because I'm in a different alternate lifestyle, mm-hmm. I have the pleasure and the luck of being with other young women. Right. And other young women enjoy that. But I never. So, got- so wait, let's back up because so the, the fans know that you guys kind of y'all swing a little bit. Y'all swing and y'all kind of. Open We're in an alternate your... lifestyle. Right, 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 right. Okay. You know, we got married, but we got married with the understanding that, like, listen, we love each other. We both have cheated on everybody we've ever been with before. Mm-hmm. I think, and this is, you know, up for debate. We could talk about this, but I think everybody either cheats or is just miserable. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of think the human beings are somewhere between, like, monogamy and just wanting to like have uh unadulterated sex with everybody you could touch well either right. one of those are not good you right right the entire world and you can't just be fucking one person so my wife and i kind of made a decision as friends because we were friends first yes said, why don't we just have not an open relationship because i think that open is like connotes we could just go have this happy life right right whatever we want but we just kind of made a decision hey we'll just go out with other couples and maybe like all keep it in the family does that uh-huh. make sense? yeah yeah another couple and we'll just go watch movies with them and then maybe we'll do a little well maybe we'll fuck well i don't like to put it like that i said make love because okay. i'm <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. i'm sorry i don't why know you gotta be so know? blunt and brutal about it i don't it, know Dante, what's wrong with me I, I, I don't know why i'm so fucking uncouth this, like, is, <laughs> this is why you need hostages. This is why you don't have friends. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, so to put it in a nice way, we'll have a couple of other people. It doesn't happen a lot, but we'll go out with them and be like, hey, do you want to like maybe do this? And I'll go upstairs with your wife and we just have a little fun. That's right. All. And okay. it's served as well. I don't recommend it to everybody because it takes a lot of ego. Yes. Uh, out of your, you need, you need to get very self-actualized with yourself and, People can't believe we do this, but I do have to say that uh, not every couple can do it, but we do it because we love each other. And we just don't want to be one of those couples that just cheat on each other. We right. Just, and uh, so anyway, so that's the alternate lifestyle. Now, let me can I ask you this? Uh, two questions. Um, when that happens, do you, are you there? Do you watch it or do you kind of just go, kind of separate and go do your own thing? We could do it both ways. I prefer separate because my wife is so loud and uh, I have ADD. Right, right. So, so she's distracting. She's so fucking distracting. <laughs> Whatever I'm doing, you just hear like it sounds like there's a porn movie here right <laughs> next to you. You kind of enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy, but you're just hearing more. <laughs> and you know, so that's so I prefer separate um, right but my wife can do it either right right she doesn't care either way she doesn't yeah. care. but so when you came up with this thing because i always say to my wife honey let me go down on you and tell me how to do it so i can do it for other people and right like, i don't really know because i don't really like it so when you were talking i was like i think for the first i think you managed which is impossible with me uh-huh. to be shy i think i was uh-huh. like yeah, Dante, that's how you do it. You oh, saying, man. You kept saying to me, you know, when you do this and you have to keep her in place. But I was right, like, of right. course you fucking do with the <laughs> I was like, when I got off the podcast, like, I have no idea what he just talked about. And I go, one day I'm going to admit to him that he has to go. He has to give me a lesson. All right. All right. So let me let me then I have to apologize to you because I my assumption was that because you swing that is, you know, it's like no yeah. holes bars. You know what I mean? Which I is, know what I'm doing. Right. Well, not just that, but I mean, I mean, we I all, know. everybody is different in terms of, you know, like just even what you know about, even when you're a great lover, it doesn't mean shit because each person is is so different. 
That's you so know? true. That's so true. And you don't know what anybody wants. But but let's 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 frame it in comedy. Every every audience you go in front of is different. The the tone is different. The people are different. What their perspective. But what you do is you learn a skill set. Oh, I'm so happy this is coming to me as we're thinking of it. Like it's so much like comedy that you learn a skill set that you can that applies, but it doesn't have to apply. That, or, it that, has to, or it has to be tailored to the way. right. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with that. Yes, I do agree with that. And that, and I, and I was talking to this younger comic the other day. Actually, I was um I was I was traveling with Godfrey, and um we, that guy's we, not gonna make it. Or no, you <laughs> <laughs> and me got no chance. He can ask. He probably should talk to Amy. Let Amy write. Not gonna. He's just. <laughs> Someone's got to tell him that he's just not. That, that <laughs> it's don't over. It. You got to know when it's over. You know what? You don't have what it takes. Exactly. It's over. It's over. <laughs> yeah. You got to go. Enough is enough. And and Mitch, he's, it's, it's, it's so weird because he's so fucking good. Like, oh my! Like, he, there's so many elements, voices, and impressions, and dialects, and content, and. Yeah, but what I was I was just I'm just sorry, it's it's weird because um I was talking to a younger comic and and so the mic oh no the mic was low right and I said yo you got to crank the mic up and I said the reason why you have to crank the mic up is because you know I, I was talking about Godfrey too because I I go the you know when you create when you do comedy it's like you're painting a painting right and every aspect every skill set you have is is a color is a color on the color palette right yeah and and um and then you decide what the painting is like in in real time you're creating and you decide which paints you use you which ones are darker but so but with comedy it's not paint it's characters it's voices it's pauses it's crowd work it's it's um Wording. It's a, it, wording. It, it, wording, but it's also volume. And if the mic is too low, you 100%. take you the, the 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 range of volume. It's going from a whisper to a, and it's really good. Because that's really good because you kind of utilize that. That the volume was a such a. I'm, I learned that from you. That vol how important volume is. Watching you. Because well, it's so fucking important and intricate. And I always say to people, I'm like, if you don't give me that, it doesn't matter what a good pilot is. I don't have freaking wings on my plane. Like, right. I'm like, you need that one thing. And I always tell people, give me more because I'll know because I'll know how to use my whispers and I'll yes. know how to use my voices and stuff and that intricacy. And yeah, and and it's those little things that because it seems so simple. Yeah. Mic up, it's so much more than that. Yeah, and it's the nuance, the nuance of knowing that range. So when we talk about eating pussy, you, you, you it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's okay. You you met one girl that she likes small circles around the clip. You met another person who likes doesn't like direct contact on the clip or somebody that likes you taking you taking notes mitch i'm gonna finally start writing this down yes. mitch is for those of you listening mitch is pulling out a, <laughs> eagerly pulling out a pen and a pad yeah, this is where i messed up last time is i just <laughs> cool it's like, all right little circles <laughs> and mitch so just so you don't the, i mean I, i'm almost positive i got your number if not if you ever have to call me you I, I I would love to hear from you either way to say hello or to go. What did you say about that? I will, I don't mind either. I should have had the balls to call you. <laughs> hey, uh, can ahead. you tell me what you were explaining? And I would have been better off. But uh, okay, okay. So so you 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 go through you know through different relationships. I'm quite sure you went through relationships, and there's certain things that women like and certain things that other women didn't like, and whatever. Yes, you with me on that? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Okay. Okay, because I'm not gonna let you. I'm not gonna let you bail out on it and not. Oh, and I'm then, not here. I don't have right. any. I don't have much to hide anymore. I'm right. an open book. Okay, so, but what mostly happens a woman who likes a guy to go down on him, 
um, they usually they masturbate, right? They everybody masturbates and they know what they like, right? Right. right. So right. I'm with you so far. So when you, if you have, you know, this whole thing where they go, people go lick the alphabet is fucking rid- that's stupid, right? Yeah. I lick but, the Russian alphabet. That's what I do. <laughs> that's a, you do an Enya. <laughs> so I like but, the Chinese letters because oof. there's a lot more area, but it's exhausting. Korean, it's like two thousand characters, but whatever. But what what happens is you you in order for her to guide you to orgasm, you have to give her a consistent stroke so that she can make the adjustments. Right. And then, and then, and I'm with you on that. I think that you, first of all, I think the number one mistake guys make, this is what I've ascertained in my experience. Okay. First, you, they dive in way too fast. Yes. You can't desensitize the clitoris. And right. you will, it's, 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 if you a, go too hard, too fast, too hard, too fast, or too much of the same thing. Like it's, it's a lot of like a lot of teas. And yes. then once you get them going, then it's a rhythm. Then it's a yes. rhythm. And yes. like you were saying last time was, and then girls will get a little too uh, maybe excited. And it's yes. your job to kind of keep them right stable. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, so what will happen? What I find that happens is, as it feels good, they want more of it. But what you want to do is be right under the level of what they want. Does that make sense? Right. You don't want to you don't want to give them too much of what they're looking for. Right. Because then they'll back off. You want them to just keep wanting a little more. It's like, yes. Yeah. It's kind of like Christmas. OK. <laughs> if you give your kid too many toys. He doesn't play with any of the toys because it's just it's too many. But if right. you give him a couple of toys, he so so so. You're saying I should be doing jingle bells while I'm doing it. Right, right, right. And 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 uh, holding her. I remember you just kept saying, "Okay, so what'll happen?" Look, so one of the things that I, well, does I, you know, I've also learned more stuff. But I mean, um, are you a user- connoisseur of the vagina? Oh, I am a connoisseur. I love eating pussy. Me too. I love eating pussy. I do. Too. I'm a fan. Yeah. If. I do too, but there's two things I have to. Well, the other thing I learned, if I can give it for advice, mm-hmm. is guys press their face too much. That is, yeah. like girls don't want to feel your beard or anything like that. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of have to stay back a little. That's what I learned. Uh, and, I don't know if you've heard. Uh, that. But if she's coming forward, but you got to read that because if she she will push forward. So right. like so um so if uh, and. And like we got to keep in mind that nothing is etched in stone. Everything is different for each woman. So when we say you can't just jump in, I've had girls who I've had girls that'll also depend. Like it when I lean my jaw on it, like the bottom of my jaw. Well, like literally press, which is weird. They're well, grinding on it like a power forward, waiting for a rebound. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. But if you give that too quickly. Sure. You, you 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 fuck up the whole thing. So yeah. go ahead. So it's a it's sort of a, you know, hey, how are you? How are you? Doing? How it's work? You know what I mean? It's like there's an introduction, and then she will kind of guide you to where you need to be non-verbally, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it, that's what you said. And then what I think where I got a little confused was. Then you said once she gets closer. Now I'm reading. Now I'm understanding what you're saying. Uh, As she gets closer, it's your job to kind of like keep her from getting too crazy. Right, right. Because it'll fuck up the work that you've done. You put in. Right. Too right. many Christmas presents. Right. So right. Too many Christmas. So you're she she has this rhythm, and so for I, I'm trying to think about. Okay, so maybe you're lick your first. You you maybe you're under the hood. Right. And you're going lightly under the hood. Right. Right. And then when it feels good, she will either maybe tighten her buttocks or she'll raise up or she'll push to your mouth. Right. When she pushes to you, give her that. But you don't want to push to her. You don't want to push too much. Until she pulls back, you want to pull back before she pulls back. 
Right. You want to, but that, if I, yeah, I can just, uh, if, if I can just tell the master what I think he's saying, yeah, is that is almost uh, the art of teasing. Yes. You, you know, you just want to keep having them come forward to you. And now, right. Until you're ready to go, okay, they're ready to go over the edge. Right, right. Then you go in and you give them that. Then you give it all, and then she goes over the edge. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's exact. I think that's what I was saying. That's and then the art of the tease. And I think right. it's good for women to know as well. I think, yeah. Because like, yeah. I know that, like, if I have problems getting hard and I need a girl to get me hard, I know that if she give, starts out big, I won't yeah. get hard. But if she does nice and slow. Yeah, she give you. Because it's like you don't want too much. I think, I think the penis and the clitoris are similar in that if there's just too much stimulus at once, yeah, it's too overwhelming. I also think it's. I think something that maybe you're not even thinking about. It it is the the mental, uh, uh the the mental connection of you being into the T's to oh, to I like that. You know yeah. what I mean? So I well, think there's a mental kind of connection where you go. Oh, okay. Like, you know, like if I, a girl, you know, a girl's going to blow me and then she just take the tongue and run the tongue under the, the seam, what I call it, you know, just okay. and you're yeah. like, whoa, okay. And then it's, wait a minute. Then it's, you know what I mean? But it's the, I think there's a mental connection to so, the fact that she's enjoying it too. And that you can be selfish about enjoying it, if that makes sense. It is. And so what you're saying is actually kind of the whole philosophy that I have about sex and why I think sex has gotten not bad, but people are getting confused. And what I yeah. say, so like, so this is what I say, like, whenever I have a new lover or somebody that I'm texting, mm -hmm. uh, they always say, do you want me to send you pictures? And mm -hmm. I always say, tease me. The art of teasing has been forgotten. Men and right. women both need teasing. Teasing yeah. is one of the beautiful things that God has given us about sex. You know, I always had this fascination. And I always, no matter what happens in my life, I try to go, what did I learn from that? Now, I don't know if you're a big strip club guy or not. I'm I'm not. My, me neither. And the reason why I'm not a big strip club guy is two reasons. The first reason is I've gone to enough strip clubs in my life that when I walk in, and I think you'll understand what I mean by this, there's so many breasts that yeah. I don't even notice there's breasts anymore. Right, right, Does right. Make, like, yes, like, yes. Like the the tease of being out on a date with a girl and wondering the entire night, what kind of tits does she have? Do they yeah. play like this? It's the Whatever. anticipation. Oh, my God, dude. I yeah. mean, there is just a joy in going like i never want a girl to come over in the lifestyle and just fuck i want to go right. on a date with them first i want to spend time with them because i want to see them dressed up and right. i want to have my imagination going and i want to go in most the reason why girls are so hot to us mm -hmm. is because what we're doing is we're seeing something that we're not supposed to see right so when a woman's out at a pool and she's gorgeous or she's at a mm -hmm. she's dressed sexy most of us have to sit there and go, fuck, what's that girl's pussy look like? What does her right. vagina look like? What Does her breast do this? Do they go to the side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you finally take off her bra and you're like, oh, my God, this is what her breasts look like. So that's taken away from us when you right. get. So when you walk into a strip club, all that's gone. You just that's so you just get so many breasts that you forget that it's exciting to see breasts. And I always say to people, I I want to be teased. I want you to send me a little bit of your nipple sticking out of a bra. I mm -hmm. want you to send me your, your panties just a little bit to the side. I right. want it bent over with just a time because yeah. my mind then is going, I want to see the whole thing. I want to see the whole thing. It keeps right, me right. so excited. Right, 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 right. But if you get a naked picture immediately, it's fine. You go, oh, my gosh. But then you're like, all right, it's, it's just. It's OK, all. I got it all. All right. Moving on. And And there's an art, I think. For guys to do to girls and girls to do to guys. I think that girls, unbeknownst to us, go through the same thing. Girls love yeah. what our cocks look like. Like they love going, like, I've had girls that I was one night stands were like, when you were on stage, I just couldn't, I just was like, what's that guy's cock look like? What does he look like when he comes? Yeah. I mean, so 
they want that tease too. Yeah. So the guy send dick pics too fast. I think, you know, it's like all that shit just happens so fast and a lot of the tease is taken out of it. And I think that the tease is the beauty of sex. And I think that that's what you're bringing up almost with the going down that like if you're teasing, yeah, they, someone keep they keep wanting more. Right. Yes, absolutely. But I also think that you have to take into consideration your your options and your availability. You know what I mean? Like it's like you 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 got a nice you know what I mean you got a nice stat sheet. Like it's like you you've been laid when a guy doesn't have anything. Right. He, a, a, a picture of a pussy is great. Strip club is great. It's I think what happens is the intimacy of it is what starts to be the turn on. Once you've been around the block a little bit and you're older and it's not just about pussy, I I find the Viagra for me is the the brain. It's the, the my brain that makes me erect. Not only that, but it I'm older now where I'm not, you know, getting some pussy is not a thing. It's that's that can happen when I want it to happen. Now I want the pussy that I want. It's the, kind of the same thing. I'm making the analogy with comedy. It's like when you first get that laughter, oh, I got it figured out. Then it, then getting that same high is very different. You want to go on stage and you want to do what you want to do, how you want to do it. You want to create this picture. You want to create this art that just what you want it and you know when it's perfect. And you could have killed, but yeah. it, you still don't have the satisfaction of when you have control over it, when it's just perfect. But I think what you're getting, like, and this is the fascination for me with sex and performing, I guess, because this is now the, it's good the same thing. Yeah. The, the the analogy I have is this. I know I'm a good comedian and I know I'm always going to have another great show sooner or later. Right. But I still get that little bit of nervous energy and that excitement right before I go on to see if mm -hmm. I'm going to do it or not. Now, I remember right before Mitch Hedberg, one of my favorite comedians of all time, I remember right before he kind of killed himself, Yeah, you know, whatever he did with heroin, uh, we were working together. We did something called the Mitch and Mitch show. And mm. we were kids and, and we were both the two top Mitches. He was way, way, way ahead of me as Mitch mm -hmm. Hedberg. And a, a, co a college called us and they're like, hey, we want to do the Mitch and Mitch show. We want you to open for Mitch Hedberg, whatever. And I said, you know, I was thrilled. Of course, he's one of my heroes. Right. I went on, I did 30 minutes and I fucking destroyed, which right. was shocking for me because I didn't know how people would react to me knowing that Mitch Hedberg was after me. Right, right. They would just want to get past me, but they loved right. me. Right. I came off stage feeling great. Hedberg went on and Hedberg couldn't do his act because everybody kept yelling back his punchlines. Right. He's gotten so famous at that point. Yeah, yeah. And I saw a frustration and a pain in him because... Yeah. It was not any more like, can I do bad? It was like, everybody loves me. They're just going to yell at me. Yeah, yeah. And the joy went out of it for him because we need to have that little bit of like, am I going to yeah. do good? And I yeah. think sex, you said, yeah, we can get laid. But like, I still, like, me personally, and I try not to pass judgment in my life, but I've been to a couple of prostitutes because I thought everybody tries that in their lives. And I always left going, why am I not satisfied? Why do mm -hmm. I feel this? And what it was is because I knew going in the, the transaction. It was, it was transactional. There was no way I wasn't going to get it. Right. No matter who I'm with in the lifestyle now, that moment where I'm like, I'm going to go make my move, 90% of the time they're going to be like, yeah. Yeah. But there's always still that 10% of going like, I don't, you know, I'm not comfortable with this, whatever. Yeah. So, so I still get that excitement of like, am I going to get this girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like that chase. You like this. Well, it's that you remember the Twilight Zone with a gambler. Uh, he Absolutely. thought that yep. he, he, every time he throws the dice, he wins. Yeah. And then he realizes he's in hell because the whole point is the fact that he might lose. That makes that's gambling the, exciting. Right. That's the that's the high. Yeah. The high is in. I could oh lose. God, I could die. I could. Right. And if you yeah. take away that loss and I use that with my kid day to day of like, let him fail because yeah. he needs to know that he can fail. Right. And right. You take away the joy of life. You yeah. know, I just, I just recently, I'm one of those dads that like, I'm going to be an old school dad. My kid is five and he asked for a dollar and I was like, you got to do something for a dollar. Right. 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 Whatever. And he's like, 
and his friends just get dollars to go to camp and buy stuff. And I, so I make him make his bed. And the other day I went upstairs and his bed was made beautifully. And he came out, I handed him a dollar. And I got to tell you, man, if you want to talk about the joy in life, when I saw the smile yeah. on his face that he earned that dollar and I was like, yeah, yeah. so, so I think human beings need that sense of like, sure. I did this and I could have failed too. Sure. Sure. And, sure. And, and that's where I think sex is getting very far away from that. You don't want a sure thing. Right. You know, you right. Don't. I think I, I also think that's a lot of the reasons why somebody like Dane Cook fell off because the the he was surrounded by a bunch of people that were were, you know, sucking his dick. His fan, he could do no wrong. No wrong. And, he, and he was in this microcosm of just everything I do is great. And then where's the. Where's the, the 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 fun in that? Like, and then you you start yeah. speaking a language that they only speak, and then then all of a sudden you realize your peers, the people who matter, the people who really know what's good, art, what good art is, they're going like, "What the fuck are you? T- what are you? What are you talking about? Like, we don't even know what the fuck you're talking about." Did you ever hear just to totally piggyback onto that? Did you ever hear the Buddy Hackett story about how Buddy Hackett was at the end? Now, you know who Buddy Hackett is, I'm assuming? Of course. course. Yeah, comedian, legendary comedian Buddy Hackett. I know Gary Mule Deer. I definitely know Buddy Hackett. I don't want to assume, but I'm saying for your life. I don't know. I mean, we're we're comedy aficionados. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if Buddy Hackett's... Buddy so Hackett was an old school uh, stand-up comedian cats back in dude. the day. Yeah, kind yeah. of cats, but uh, sharp one-liners. Very funny dude in now, a now, lot of movies. Now, the story about Buddy Hackett is this. If you saw Buddy Hackett, he's the cutest, almost like me on stage. He yeah. was cute and fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just whatever. And he was, and he did tons of kids' movies, and people yeah. loved him. Anyway, I heard a story about Buddy Hackett. They said in Buddy Hackett's last chapter of his career, he'd go on stage, and he would pick out a woman in the audience and he would relentlessly be mean to her. Uh-huh. He would say shitty stuff to her. Uh-huh. He would he would be mean and say like you're. And he, he, he there was no joke to it. And uh-huh. it, the people would laugh a little. And then all of a sudden they'd be like, he's like, just being mean. He's yeah. Just mean. And then what he would do? Switch. After he got the whole audience to hate him. He would get him back, right, right, right. And they said because he had gotten so good at what he did, and he looked so cute, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. He needed the fact that they were going to laugh at him, so he tried. Yeah, that beautiful man. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That challenging story. him, challenging himself when he didn't have to. Well, I first heard that story as a kid. I thought, well, Buddy Hackett's obviously a dick. People are gone, but I was like, right. no, I get it as an artist that he got yeah. to the point where he was like, I need to feel that sense of like I lost him. Let me get him back to see how uh-huh. talented I am. Yeah. Yeah, now, I'm, isn't I'm, that crazy? Yeah, I'm challenging myself. I have to challenge myself because you get to the point where you know I've I've said that when people have complimented me, man, I was a great set. It was just that moment, and you because I'm always looking for those organic moments, and I always say because I'm trying to stay interested in this art form. I, it's not for you; it's for me. I, I'm I'm yeah. trying to stay liking what I do. And the only way I'm going to do that is by challenging myself and having something to shoot for. So I think that's that's the perfect thing. And I, I think that's also why we what the 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 lure to comedy is, because it is different every time. I mean, you do get a level where you're so proficient, like right now, like now, if I bomb right, it's a seven and a half or eight out of ten. I know that I didn't get them. I know I didn't bang it. You know what I mean? But it, there's no situation where it's silence. For yeah. that. It's just not, I just have too much skills to for that to happen. But my bombs are like, people go, that was a good show. And uh, I'm like, nah, it was a sucky show. That's yeah. my bomb. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. But, because but, you become so proficient. You, It's like, yo, I scored 20 points and two rebounds and then I didn't hit no threes. You know what I mean? It's just that's a shitty game for Michael. Yeah, Jordan, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a shitty game. It's twenty. Games. So I, I get the the point, but I think that you know, um, I, I I think that becomes 
your the level of of expertise or where you think to operate it grows with your expertise and it's something i i used to say a lot i don't say a lot i said the we we are always pursuing perfection but perfection is unattainable because that, unattainable. right Thank as God. but as you get closer to perfection perfection moves further away from you yeah. it, it's sort of like swiss cheese you only see the big holes and then when you get close to it there's little microscopic holes as well. And as you get closer, it gets, and then you're in, you're looking on, on a cellular level in this space. And then, so it just, it, it's always moving because the scope of what you see is, is more detailed and you see more flaws. So that, that so perfection is unattainable, but um, it's funny because eating pussy is kind of the same way. It's I'll like, like it back there. Cause that's what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Back to pussy. It, that's what I it's eat. it's so um you know you can like so for instance you say say if you you first you got to figure out you got to figure out what the what the 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 baseline is so a lot of times it's Harry what you were saying is like you know how you say you push your your chin but I will I will brace my chin or the, my top lip on the mound right the yeah. top mound or the bottom. I believe so, that Mons pubis. The pubis, yes, it is. So, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Mitch. <laughs> but but the student has become the master <laughs> in this situation. I young technical shit. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> young Padawan has snatched that pebble from my hand. Uh, but um, so that gives you a base to work from. So now your your head is locked into a particular plane. And then you, if your mouth is over the vagina, you can uh, increase or decrease the pressure by how far you stick your tongue out. Yeah, but for, well, let's first not get ahead of ourselves because what I've always learned is that's where the teasing comes in. That you don't go right in and just start right, right, the clit, that you're going around it. Right, right. Well, we're right. We've got to do that to the taste around the side, Sucking kissing the thigh, sucking a little, a little bit, bit, kiss it, you know, blah, blah, blah. you do a lot of things, but and you pull back and you let that sink in. And but once you get the once you get that where it's it's warm and the you'll and the other thing I think you have to pay attention, you've got to pay attention to breathing because uh, that that everything. Right. So the, the so the diaphragm, we know the diaphragm from singing, you diaphragm raises is what you want initially is that <laughs> that's the teasing. Right. right, right but right. once you get in into the point where you're climbing that, you know, the, the roller coaster is ticking up, the, there needs to be the think about the ticking in a roller coaster is very steady. That's tick, where the tick, 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 tick. Tick, tick, tick. It, there's no change in that, right? But then what you so if you have your, your your head is mounted, either the top of your mouth is is on the pubis or the, your chin is on the bottom or whatever, gives you a base to work from. And then your tongue going out or coming in, you can you can adjust the the pressure from how far you stick your tongue out. So your mouth is over the vagina. <laughs> Now, Obi Wan, uh, at this point, <laughs> is my are my hands around her legs? Are you holding? Not, down? Yeah, well, that's that's a, something. Even that you got to figure out. See, like, that's what I prefer. I like that. And then I think what you had said. That's where I was like, I got to remember that. And then right. I had, it was like, and then this, then then it's going to start going, and then they're going to try to get. You said this. It sounds terrible in this game. <laughs> But you said like they're going to try to kind of get away or push too forward, and it's your job to keep them right there. I remember. Okay. You okay. That. So, so one of the tech, and so there's a few. So since then, I've I, I've also met girls who like their legs wide open, right? And wide open makes it more difficult because yeah. well, she now has. She, right. She has so she can change the plane. She can change the plane and she can move, which mm -hmm. fucks up the rhythm that the yep. up the road, the tick, 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 tick. But if she likes her legs open, I also know girls that like it with their legs closed. What I used to do initially was I would have the girl like shoulder legs apart and I would lay on top of her legs. 
Okay, lay on top of her legs. So right? the legs, right? So because then the weight of my body keeps her movement Stable. limited, right? That's but, what you said in the last podcast. You want limited movement, right? Right. So that I didn't know. I never heard that before. That was right. new, by the way. I never heard that. Okay, because if if her legs are open and her feet are running around, whatever, she can move around and and she's fucking it up. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Because she because she knows when it feels good, and then she puts. So the the so the you're move, basically saying like a chick, you got to save them from themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So so if you're laying on top and your weight is on it, and then it also gives you two free hands. Where you can work the nipples and working all over the place, right, right, and rub and what you can choke if you want to choke, you can do it. One it gives you a lot of options, which I understand. People are listening. There's a whole lot of variables we're talking about, but that's the point. The point is to have the expertise, to have ten years of comedy, so that you have all these other skills, and then you got to decide. Then each situation is different, and you got to decide what it is. But this one situation where you lay on top. It keeps her the her movement limited, right? So that right. when she's That's pushing, when she's pushing towards you, she can't really push towards you because your body is on her. So what what will happen a lot of times? She'll tighten her buttocks, and the buttocks will lift her up. You right. know what I mean? Kind of like a small, like uh, like a you know, like a curl almost, like yeah, a like butt. Yeah, I get it. I get right. Saying. I say like. And then she pushes herself to up. So you let's hypothetically, because it may be on top of the clit, it maybe it could be long licks underneath, it could be light flicks or in the same place, but it has to stay com- stay consistent. Consistent. Right. That's that up the roller coaster. Tick, 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 tick. Right. You're all over the place and she's moving. You can't keep it, then there's no consistency. Then it's like then you got a little that, a little that, and then that. That roller coaster can't ever take off. It's just right. kind of going all around. Yeah, clack, 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 clack. It's sliding back. It's going, you know what I mean? It never gets to the top. You're never going to get to the finish line at that right. point. Right. So, so that, so, but then when her, when her movement is limited, you could tell by the butt, when she tightens the buttocks, brings it forward, gives you more pressure. And then when she loosens the press, she loosens her buttocks and drops back down. So you have this going up, down, up, down, pressure, you know, tension, relaxed tension. Now your job is to then figure out the, to, you're supposed to pull back before she, pull, before she relaxes. Yes. So, uh, Professor, uh, <laughs> at this point now, uh, what are your thoughts on a little finger insertion, a little work in the G spot at the same time? Definitely a thing if she's into that. Yeah, because I find it, if she's that, not, if she's not, you could fuck it all up. Well, see, this is what I've also learned in my time. Uh, one of my biggest mistakes as a as a teenager and as a young man that I that I've learned is. Uh, guys tend to not realize that you have to be kind of rough if you're doing the G spot. That it's it's yeah, not it's, that, a, it's it, up it, 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 yeah it's yeah a, you know it's, it's yeah it's up there it, yeah it, there's some work involved there's some shoulder muscle strength and, yeah 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 that, if you so get in the G spot yeah that's one of the things my wife does she's like you're too you're just it's the vagina is very resilient it's not yeah, as yeah. it's yeah, yeah, yeah. To us, you think you're going to hurt it, but it's it's pretty well well made. Well, a baby, you can push a baby out of it. So that Thank there you. you go, right? Right. But I've also done a finger up the ass, right? I've done a finger up the ass, and not a, you know what I mean. So, but I mean, now we're talking about a whole. I don't even want to go there because that's a whole other. We got five minutes left on the show, so that's there's a whole, podcast. That's yeah, next a, no finger up the ass. Eating pussy with a finger up the ass is a whole nother thing. So, um, we didn't but get the tongue up the ass. We didn't. Get we didn't. We things. got so much to do. So much. Plus, working that, working the the G spot with um, and trying to maintain that tick 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 tick. Difficult to do. Where do it's, you stand on guy noise? You think we have to be quiet during this, or because I know that when a girl's going down, I'm, I like that little moaning of hers. Yeah, but. I'm always like, yeah, I wonder if the girl the girl probably is like doesn't need to hear us going like I think it depends. I don't know girls to really to really uh to to 
I've never had a girl that goes, oh, I'm, I'm into the noise. I think girls want us to shut up. I don't yeah, think they want yeah. us going, you're going to mm. come, you're going to come for me. Come on, baby. You can do it. I don't think yeah, they yeah. want that. No, I they don't want that's that. That's undue pressure. I think that a lot of guys think that in pornos, they do that. I think we're just supposed to shut our mouth. They go into their old little world. And, you know, my yeah. wife and I are close enough now that if she's close and I go, oh, I love doing this, I want to shut up. <laughs> Yeah, she goes, <laughs> I know that like that's another thing that guys get a little. But also, I think what you have to do, it's just like when she's pushing forward is that when she's tightening the buttocks and she's pushing forward, she's telling you, give me more pressure. Right. right. And and if the girl is into talking, she'll engage that. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So if you think you're doing what you want is a base level thing happening with consistency and then you want to let her guide you so if she's talking you talk back if she's giving if she's pushing up you give more pressure if she's pulling back you need to pull back before she pulls back if if she's if if she's if you put the finger in and you and you i mean you're looking at is that a oh uh, if you put the finger in uh, so we're doing just like we're doing on comic. I get, you know, I, yeah, I got my jokes and shit, but that's not what's funny. It's, right. it's all a nuance that. Timing, and the, nuance, absolutely. And the only nuance and the nuance in eating pussy is the same thing. It's paying attention. Even if, like I used to say to guys, this young guys, especially, you know, a guy will have a girl missionary style and he's banging away, banging away, banging away. And then her thighs are pushing against his quads. If her flies are pushing up against your quads, it's because you're too deep. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. pushing you out, like, to not recognize that. If you're going on a pussy and you're going crazy and she's going, ah, 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 and she's, that's not what you want. You want to, ooh, ooh. Yeah, you want that quiet. Yeah, you're right. Right, right. and then that builds to, because then when it, when it is, when you, she's getting ready to go over the top, She'll grab your motherfucking head and hold it. In, like, she knows where you're at, but you got to get her to that point okay. where, where she is. And so I think if you th if you if you apply all the things that you've learned from stand up. It's it's the same thing. It's the same. It's the nuance. But it's also I'm a little better at stand up, though, than that. But right. right. But I'm saying the principles are the same. The principles are the same, and it's also taking deep breaths. You said you're breathing. It's that's people don't realize that it's a nice step. Is that breathing? Yeah, watching her breathing, the depth of her breathing. Her breathing you're breathing too. Yeah, you're yeah. With yeah. Her and you're not getting too excited, you know. And like I said, it's like if you ever watch a porn film. Uh, have you ever seen a porno film? Do you know what they are? I've hmm. seen one or two. I mean, I'm right. a friend. I've that. heard Harry, of them. Harry always wants to watch them with me. I do. <laughs> in, yeah, I've seen a couple. But in but the only thing that can ruin what a porno film with a hot girl, I've always said this. If you get the most gorgeous girl in a porno film, what can ruin it is a guy talking too much. Yeah. Some dude yeah. with her, you're like, you're not the important thing. I want to watch. Right, you. right, 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 right. You need to hear you saying your shit. Just fucking, you're lucky enough to get your dick there. Just yeah, yeah. It. Shut up. And right. So I try to remember that for me, too. That I'm like, they're not, they don't get off on the same stuff we yeah. get off. Yeah, you exactly. Know, say a couple of I'm your daddies and shit like that. But they don't want to hear an ongoing dialogue. They really yeah. don't. Like, you know, and, so. and, and as much as we say they don't want to, there's somebody who does. And there's somebody who does. Because yeah, there's I'm somebody who wants you to talk all the shit in the world, man. Mitch, we got it. You, you're up. I don't want to hold you up because I know you got to get out of here, brother. Thank you so much for coming, man. I'm gonna. Uh, I texted you. Did you get my number? Did you get a text from me? I don't know if I did, but I'll check it. All right, check it, and if not, I'll get the number from the booker. Yeah. And, and let's keep in touch, bro. Let's say let's do a regular thing here, and uh, I'll I'll keep you up to date on my exp if I learned uh, my methods well. All yeah. right. I, I mean, you could call me. I don't. I don't have a problem. I mean, I'd love to. Uh, to be honest, Mitch, I'd love to hear from you. There was nothing. There's nothing I'd like better than to fucking pick up my phone and see Mitch Patel on my fucking caller ID. And I, you know, please tell your wife I said hello too. I will do that. And you're welcome to visit us on our farm in Arkansas whenever. You I want. would love to do that, man. Let's do that. All right. Love you guys. I love you too, bro. Yeah, Mitch. Bye, Harry. Bye.